Well, ladies and gentlemen, hello again. Welcome to another Reflected Reality Simulations video. My name is Graham, and we're here again with the IXEG 737-300. We're at Presswick Airport in the uh, west coast of Scotland, the Ayrshire coast. Presswick's down here. This is the island of Arran around here. Uh, Glasgow's over here. This is the uh, Upper Clyde and uh, the island of Cumbria around here. What we're going to be doing at Press Week is uh, something a little bit different today, uh, something that was uh, a suggestion by one of the uh, members on the xplane.com forum. We're going to have a look at uh, what a, a pilot might do for base training in a big jet. So once you've uh, gone through uh, all the training courses, um, the first time you get to fly a commercial aircraft, uh, obviously you don't want to have uh, passengers on board. That would uh, make things unnecessarily stressful for everybody involved. So the first uh, big jet rating you have, you have to go and do something called base training, which is a very uh, posh name for flying circuits and touch and goes in uh, 50 to 60 tons of jet aircraft. It's really an enjoyable day out. Uh, hard work, but uh, quite relaxing as well in a therapeutic kind of way. What we're going to be doing is looking at how we can use uh, the fixed page on the uh, IXAG model to compensate for some of the limitations we have with simulator visuals. So without further ado, the aircraft's uh, already running. We've got about uh, four tons of fuel on board. Uh, we've got a slightly different config than uh, maybe what you'd expect to see on this aircraft. First thing, the pressurization system is in standby mode and set the airfield elevation. That's to avoid any uh, off schedule descent uh, warnings that you might get uh, with the pressurization system operating in uh, automatic. Uh, on the uh, bugs, we've got uh, again something a little bit different. What we've actually bugged uh, on here is the uh, approach speeds for flaps uh, 30. So you see we've got uh, 126 with the uh, double bug here, uh, plus 15 uh, on here. Uh, we want to have uh, 170 on there and 210. Okay, so the reason why we've got that uh, bugged is we're going to be flying circuits. We don't want to be heads down changing the box or changing the bugs. These bugs here will work adequately as uh, the rotate point uh, for the uh, both the touch and go and the initial departure. We're going to fly with the flight directors off and the auto thrust off. Target mark, uh, target IS here is set to 190, which is going to be our minimum downwind speed. When we get airborne, I'm going to pitch to 15 degrees, uh, climb out to at least a thousand feet before lowering the pitch altitude to about 10 degrees, let the aircraft accelerate, and uh, once it's above the uh, plus 15, we can go from flaps uh, 15 up to flaps 5, and then once we level, we're going to level at 1600 feet today, which is uh, just 100 feet above the normal uh, circuit altitude for this kind of jet. And uh, we will level, turn left onto a downwind heading. On the fixed page, uh, I've just drawn two little uh, lines on here. Radial 104 and 30, uh, sorry, 124 and 304. That's essentially uh, an extension of the runway heading there. I've also got a two mile ring and a three and a half mile ring. The two mile ring, well, we're going to be heading downwind, uh, just about two mile spacing from the airfield. That's perfect. And we're going to be following downwind until we get to about the three mile point. That's going to be the trigger for some actions down there. We're going to use the uh, picture on the nav display, maybe just the first couple of times around the circuit. And uh, thereafter, we'll use the visual references that we can find on the ground as well. So it's uh, a little bit different. Uh, manual flying in the sim is always a, a little bit of a challenge. Um, we'll give it a go, see how we get on. Check there's nothing on the approach. And uh, we're going to be using manual thrust all the way through as well. So what we're looking for is about uh, 85 to 90% thrust on the uh, takeoff roll. Presswick's quite a, a popular base for doing this uh, this kind of work. It's quite a quiet airport with uh, big runways and uh, there's not so many uh, airspace issues. You can do the uh, the arrival out over the water when you're landing on the, on this runway. Okay, so we're going to line up on the runway. Stand up the thrust levers as, uh, as normal. And rather than pushing the toga button, I'm just going to advance the thrust levers, looking for about uh, about 85 to 90 percent. Just 
about when the note changes on the engine noise, you'll hear it start to get a little bit noisier. There's uh, V1 rotate, pitching for 15 degrees. Positive climb, gear up. We're just going to try and hold that 15 degrees now. So once we're through uh, a thousand feet uh, radio, lower the nose to about uh, 10 degrees. And because we're above that uh, first uh, bug, I'll go to flaps five. Looking to level, bringing the uh, thrust back gradually to around uh, 60% or so. Looking for about uh, five degrees. And once we're above uh, the manoeuvring speed, which is 180, we'll start a 25 degree turn to the left. So looking for a, a good thrust datum here, one, uh, 180 is the minimum speed I can be, flaps 5. Looking for about uh, 5 degrees on the pitch attitude and 25 uh, roll. About 65% thrust, coming back to about 60% when we're level. If you haven't flown the, uh, the model much, uh, manually flying it, uh, you'll notice the, uh, the pitch power couple is one of the hallmarks of the 737. When you apply thrust, the aircraft will pitch up because the engines are slung underneath the wings. Uh, on fly-by-wire Airbuses, it's uh, mostly uh, compensated for by the fly-by-wire, but 737, you've got a lot of trimming to do. But it has its benefits as well. We're using just a little bit more thrust in the, uh, in the turn here. When we roll level, we'll bring the power back and that will uh, effectively give us uh, a little bit of uh, trim down moment. You can see my course uh, or my heading uh, indicator on the uh, nav display here. It's uh, working as a, a pointer for the downwind course as well. And if it's just outside that two mile ring, that's perfect. Speed's around about 200 knots. That's really as fast as I'd want it to be. So I just uh, bring the thrust back to around 52% uh, uh, M1. And just trim it for the downwind leg. So most of the uh, flying you'd be doing in this uh, this kind of situation, you'd be doing uh, with uh, just reference to the ground features and uh, not really using the instruments at all. You don't have the same uh, ground feature awareness in the sim, so we use the nav display just to help us out a little bit. But once you've done the circuit once, that's uh, usually enough, you'll have a, a good uh, feel for where the ground features are. So downwind, 190 knots, power set uh, to about 53% and uh, within 50 feet or so of the target altitude. That's uh, that's pretty good. What's gonna happen next, as we cross that uh, three mile ring on the uh, navigation display, we're going to select gear down and uh, flaps 15. Crucially, I'm not gonna to touch the uh, thrust setting at all. I'm going to leave it exactly where it is. So minimum speed being uh, 180 knots, uh, flat 5. You see the 3 mile ring uh, just coming up under the nose of the uh, aircraft on the nav display. Corresponds nicely with uh, crossing the coastline as well. So I put the gear down, select flaps 15. And as the flaps roll out, uh, you'll notice the aircraft has a tendency to start to uh, increase its uh, vertical speed. That's just as the, uh, the flaps deploy. So we compensate with just a little pitch down moment. Once the flaps are there, I'm going to roll to about 20 degrees and uh, maintaining level flight initially, not touching the power setting. Uh, and I'll just lower the nose to around uh, 500 feet a minute or so to avoid going below 150 knots. It's about five degrees of pitch on the nose at the moment. So that's a, a reasonably good datum. So roll onto base leg there, and then I'll select flaps uh, 30 for the arrival. Look out there, we can see this little uh, outcrop of land, that's Trin Harbour there. We're going to fly around that and uh, land on the, the runway, hopefully. 
So flaps down uh, to 30, rolling to about 20 degrees. And again, in the real aircraft, uh, when you're flying any real aircraft, it's a lot easier to judge your turn on to final than it is in the uh, in the sim. For a start, you can move your head around a lot more than you can in the sim without quite uh, losing your position. Uh, quite as easy as it is uh, to do in the sim. There we go. So I can see uh, at least one red uh, and at least one white as we pass through a thousand feet, so that's pretty good. I can continue the approach. Different companies have got different rules, but uh, if you use a thousand as a, you want to be roughly there, uh, maybe about 10 knots of the speeds and uh, aircraft configured with the gear down, that should keep you safe. I can see two whites and two reds on the Pappy. Speed's maybe a little bit high. Within 15 knots, that bug's quite handy for that as well. I'll just reduce the uh, thrust and pitch a little bit to bring that speed off. A lot of trimming involved here. Crucially, I don't have the auto brake selected and uh, I'm not going to arm the spoilers because we are going to uh, essentially do a touch and go or possibly a, a go around depending on how the approach ends up. As well as the pappies, um, it's important to look at the picture the runway is forming as well. In real life, the pappies don't uh, transition directly between uh, red and white. They go through a kind of uh, pink stage initially. So that gives you a good indication you're getting just that little bit high or a little bit low. It's very easy to fly it on the pink. Um, whereas with the, uh, the sim, the pappies transition straight away. It went to three reds there. So just reduce the uh, rate and then come back down again. When you get to about 200 feet or so, you're ignoring the pappies and just flying the, uh, the picture. So on the ground, no spoilers, so it's a little bit light on its wheels. Retract the flaps to 15, quick glance down, make sure the trim's in the middle, back up. Once the flaps are set to 15, advance the thrust back up to where you had it before. Looking for at least 80%. There we go, and rotating that, just so we pass the air bug speed. Up to 15 degrees. Positive climb, gear up, hold the pitch at 15. Trim it as required. Passing through a thousand feet, just lower the pitch attitude slightly, down to 10 degrees, and select flaps 5. Flaps 5, once you're above that, uh, v, uh, that uh, v ref plus 15 bug. It's around about the 130, uh, 140 mark there. Level the aircraft at the target, 1600, around 5 degrees, bring the thrust back to about 60%, uh, above 180, uh, roll into the turn. A few, well, 100 feet higher, so there, we'll correct that in the downwind leg. So again, about uh, 10 degrees of pitch attitude and uh, 25 degree angle of bank, and around 65% initially for the turn, coming back to about 60 or so. So we know that the uh, visual picture we had kind of worked as well, just as we crossed uh, the coast. We started the turn and uh, we saw a Trin Harbour on the left hand side. We flew around the outside of that uh, to land on runway 13. You'll find that when you're flying in, uh, if you've done any light aircraft flying at all, uh, as well as flying flight simulators, there's a tendency to focus on the instruments a little bit more than what you perhaps should when you're flying uh, visually around the circuit. The reason for that is uh, the um, if you think about the flight simulator horizon that it's dis displaying out there, um, that's essentially just almost the same as an artificial horizon. Uh, on my monitor, you don't have the um, peripheral vision that you would have out the window. Uh, you also don't have the uh, the same feeling of the aircraft moving around, so you've got to really monitor the instruments a little bit more closely than you would in real life. You've got, you can get quite a good feel for flying an aircraft. And a lot of people are surprised that even a, a jet like the uh, A320, A321, um, which can be landing about uh, 
in the region of 60 tons uh, quite frequently that uh, you still get a lot of thermal effects from it you still get moved around by the wind you can really feel what the um, environment's doing um, almost like you can in uh, a much smaller aircraft so it's quite easy to fly it uh, by feel in the last few hundred feet or so so tracking downwind there's the airfield out there uh, we've got the two mile ring we're just outside that as before routing along to the same point on the coast and uh, 1,600 feet are there about and just above 180 knots. That's uh, pretty good. So anticipating a little bit of luck, this time I'll uh, set auto brake too. And uh, as we put the gear down, we'll arm the spoilers. In fact, because I'm flying it all manually, I'll arm the spoilers just now. We'd normally do that when the gear goes down, but uh, have enough hands to do that while we're flying the aircraft. There's the three mile ring just crossing the coast so gear down, laps 15, looking at the pitch attitude, waiting for the aircraft to um, balloon ever so slightly as the flaps roll out, lowering the nose to compensate for that. Trimming as required and then uh, starting to turn in about 20 degrees angle of bank. We use 25 at the um, upwind end and uh, 20 at the downwind end just because the aircraft's going that little bit slower at this end. Maintaining altitude till we get to about 160, 155 knots then looking for about 500 feet per minute uh, to maintain the speed. We're not adjusting the power that much. About 55% at this point is a, a good datum. Again trimming as required. Rolling level on base leg just for a, a quick check. There's Trin Harbour exactly where we expect it to be. We're maybe a touch lower this time than we were the last time so I'll just reduce the uh, rate of sync just now. And we'll take uh, flaps 30 and come back to the final approach speed. Crossing that 3 mile ring should be around the uh, 1000 uh, foot mark. There we go. Pappies are ahead of us. Looks like uh, probably uh, two and two, maybe uh, three reds. Bring the power back slightly to get the uh, aircraft on the speed profile. So again, 1,000 feet. We've got the aircraft configured with the gear down. Speed brakes armed this time. Flaps 30 and uh, speeds within 15 knots in the right way. And uh, all looking good. Always trimming. If you find yourself having to hold any pitch at all, um, you've just not trimmed the aircraft. So making lots of use of the trim, but avoiding the temptation to fly it on the trim. You're setting a pitch attitude, holding the pitch attitude, and then trimming to make sure the aircraft doesn't move from there. One of the really good things about X-Plane uh, compared to the Microsoft Flight Sim series is even with the uh, nil wind conditions I've got today, uh, you really do have to fly the aircraft. It feels a little bit more dynamic than what you would have on the Microsoft series. And we're down, nose gears down, reverse thrust. Auto brakes are working correctly. And with the reverse, back to forward idle. And just override the uh, auto brakes now. Bring the speed back. Still doing 50 knots on the ground. It's important to always just have a, a glance at your ground speed because uh, it's quite deceptive. You're sitting quite high up in an aircraft, even a, an aircraft like the 737, so it's quite difficult to gauge just how fast you're going. So, 
Aircraft's off the runway. We'll bring it to a halt. Get the parking brake. There's some of the spoilers. And uh, that's basically it. That's uh, flying circuits in the uh, IXEG 737-300. It's difficult to find uh, procedures, uh, exactly how you do that. Again, different operators have different uh, procedures for how they do the base training. But um, through a course of uh, trial and error and uh, sticking to fairly logical, sensible flap speeds, uh, that seems to work quite well. Just to recap, uh, we flew the uh, downwind leg just above 180 knots, about 185 is the target. And uh, on the bugs, we had um, the approach speed for flap 30, uh, which we call VREF. We maybe added a five knot increment onto that, so that'd be the VAT, uh, VAP speed. 15 knots onto that, and then uh, we've got 170 and 210. Bug target there, the uh, internal bug is 190, that would be my downwind speed. Flaps 15 for the departure, and uh, once we're above 1,000 feet, lower the pitch attitude to around 10 degrees, and once we're above this bug here, retract uh, the flaps to flaps 5 only really using flaps 5, flaps 15 and flaps 30 for the whole process. Um, once we've got flaps 5 we're accelerating uh, upwind and once we're above 180 knots which is the manoeuvring speed for flap 5 and level we can roll into the uh, downwind turn. Turning at 25 degrees maintaining around 5 degrees of pitch and uh, remember the N1 values as well. You'll have to uh, vary those depending on the weight you are but uh, if you start at 55% and work from there it's a, a good ballpark to get you started with. Uh, I hope you found that uh, interesting, something just a little bit uh, different from the uh, run-of-the-mill uh, procedures that we normally fly. And most uh, real-life pilots, they only ever get to do that uh, once in their career. Uh, when you move on to another jet type, having already flown a, a jet initially, uh, you probably wouldn't do base training again. So it's uh, an enjoyable, uh, challenging and ultimately quite a rewarding day out for uh, brand new airline pilots. If you have any questions or comments on the video, as always, uh, please feel free to uh, leave them in the comments below. And uh, any suggestions on, feed, on uh, future content, I'd be very happy to see that as well. Thanks very much for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you.